All right, so we do one more example um, for the phase transition diagram problems. And in this particular example, we're going to go backwards. We're going to start with a gas. We're going to turn the gas into liquid, and eventually we're going to turn that liquid into solid. So we're ultimately going from gas all the way to solid, but we're undergoing two transitions in the process. All right, so as I was saying, in the previous example, the first thing you want to do is for your substance, if it happens to be water, melting point is 0 degrees Celsius, boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, for any other substance, I will have to tell you what the melting point and boiling points are, uh, but you want to do the same thing. You draw your two horizontal lines representing melting and boiling point, and then you place your initial temperatures and your final temperatures correspondingly. Now, in the premise, we're going to start with a gas. The temperature has to be higher than the boiling point. So I'm going to start at some point above 100 degrees Celsius. And going all the way to the solid means that we have to go to a temperature that is lower than the melting point. So we're going to be somewhere below the melting point for T final. All right, and I kind of wrote and drew an additional horizontal line for T final because, as you'll see, we're going to be expanding towards the right quite a bit. So that kind of gives me a nice reference frame. But we're going to start with T initial. Now, T initial, since we want to go towards T final, we want to be decreasing the temperature. You want to go down in the diagonal until you hit the boiling point. All right, so that means that this is your first segment. And since the temperature is changing, you can use Q equals MCAT. Since this segment is above the boiling point, the heat capacity has to be the heat capacity of the gas specifically. Now, once you touch the boiling point temperature, here you have to go horizontal for some amount of time. All right, so you go horizontal, and in the horizontal regime where the temperature doesn't change, you have to rely on delta H to obtain the energy. Now, this is not delta H of fusion, however, because we're dealing here with the boiling point of the substance. This is actually delta H of vaporization. And we're gonna multiply delta H of vaporization by number of moles of the substance. Now notice that in addition, I'm also multiplying the terms by negative one. And the reason we're doing this is because we are actually going down in temperature. In the previous example, we were going up in temperature, so the value of N and delta H was positive the entire time through. Uh, <clears throat> but here we're doing the opposite of what vaporization is, so we're gonna put the negative in front to kind of account for that uh, discrepancy. And in the next lecture, I'm going to show you, in particular, why we do that. Like, why is the significance of this negative? But you could think of it in this term, at least for now. Since delta H vaporization involves liquid going to gas, that would require some amount of energy being absorbed. So if we go from gas to liquid, the amount of heat will now have to be released. So now we're doing the opposite. And that's the significance of the negative sign. All right, now at that point, we're going to continue going down in temperature because we haven't reached T final. So we're going to continue going down in the diagonal. And because the temperature is changing, we'll use Q equals MCAT once again. But because we are now lying in between the boiling point and the melting point, this has to be the heat capacity of the liquid. All right. Now, we get to touch the melting point in this setup because the, freeze, excuse me, the final temperature is below the melting point. So that means that now we have to go horizontal for some time, right? In this case, since now we're talking about the melting point, we have to use the enthalpy of fusion multiplied by the, excuse me, by the negative number of moles of the substance. Finally, here you have gotten rid of all the horizontal uh, lines. You can go directly now from the melting point to the final temperature. And since that's a change in temperature, we use Q equals MCAT. And specifically, we want to use the specific heat capacity of this solid, since we are lying below the melting point. All right, now, a typical problem will tell you, you know, that you have a specific amount of substance, in this case, water being the substance. You start at a temperature of 170 degrees Celsius, and you're going down to negative 10. So you'll use that information to draw this graph. You will start with your 100 degrees boiling point reference horizontal line, your zero degrees melting point horizontal reference line and then you input your initial temperature 170 which is going to have to be by default above 100 and your negative 10 degrees celsius temperature which will have to be below 0 degrees by default 
you also have to be told the heat capacity of the solid 2.064, that of the liquid 4.184, and that of the gas 2.026. And in addition, you need to know or be told what the enthalpy vaporization and fusion are. So you have the 6.01 and 44 kilojoules per mole values. So here you have your setup ready to go. You just have to input the values. You multiply the mass by the corresponding heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature, right? So we have 18.02 grams times 2.026 joules gram degree Celsius for Q1, which is the gas. Um, and the initial temperature is seven, 170, yeah, 170 degrees Celsius. And we're going down to a final temperature of 100. That's only for the gaseous segment of the graph. All right, so T final is 100, not negative 10. All right, then for Q3, where we're changing the temperature, the initial temperature is 100 degrees Celsius and the final temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So notice that we have zero minus 100. And for Q5, the initial temperature is zero degrees Celsius and the final temperature is T final, which is negative 10. So we'll have negative 10 minus zero or plus zero, same difference. But notice that we're multiplying by the corresponding specific heat capacity, the solid, the liquid, and, excuse me, the gas, the liquid, and the solid. And then for Q2 and Q4, which are the flat regions, you use the corresponding delta H value multiplied by the number of moles of the substance. So you will have to convert the grams of the substance to moles using the molar ratio, uh, excuse me, the molar mass. And as long as you're going down in temperature, this will have to be multiplied by negative one. Now, what's gonna happen is that everything's gonna cancel out except for joules or kilojoules. And you'll end up for Q1, Q3, and Q5 with negative joule amounts of heat. And Q2 and Q4 are artificially turned into negative because of the negative one that we place in front of the equation. But the key idea here is that if you're going down in temperature, everything has to be negative. If you're going up in temperature, everything has to end up being positive. Uh, you're never gonna have a case where this is negative and that's positive or that's positive and that's negative. That will never happen. Either everything is negative or everything is positive. And this is one of the reasons why this has to be negative. All right, now, <clears throat> like before, I'm gonna change the kilojoules to joules, multiply each one of them by a thousand. And what we do now is we add all of the values together to get the final amount of heat released by water. And notice that for 18 grams of water, which technically, if you're thinking of the liquid, that's only 18 milliliters of water, you end up generating a total of 60,473 60, joules of energy. That's how much energy is coming out of that amount of water when you decrease it from 170 degrees Celsius to negative 10. And that is actually a substantial amount of energy. Something that I'm going to utilize for my next explanation to kind of wrap up this entire lecture. All right, so this corresponds to the end of the video. Now, I have one more video to talk about the last part of this lecture. We're almost there.